Now you might have been tempted to say, I am running like this. Rain is falling like that. Obviously, I will get wet on the backside. But how did you decide this without knowing the velocities? Now you might ask, how does the velocity matter here, right? Let's show you. Let's say that this mountain that you are running on, you are running with a velocity such that your components are 6i plus j. So some speed like that which has components like this. Components are usually the best way to deal with vectors. You already know that. And let's say the rain is falling at 3i minus 3j. So at an angle like this, right behind you. So very much similar to the case that we discussed. So what are you trying to find here? The angle at which the rain appears to come to you. Which means you are trying to find the relative velocity of the rain with respect to you. Which means that you must subtract your velocity from the rain's velocity. You are trying to find vrm. You are trying to do vr minus vm. Now but with components here, this is going to be trivial, right? Your vr is 3i minus 3j. Yeah, because the rain is falling down. And your vm is 6i plus j. So vr minus vm will look like this. So that finally when you get an answer, you have 3 minus 6 over here which is minus 3. And you have on the other side minus 3 minus 1 which is minus 4. So you have minus 3i minus 4j as the relative velocity with respect to you. Now observe something over here, right? The i component is minus which means you took this as the positive direction. If you got a component negative, it means that to you the rain appears to come from this side. And of course, with the vertical component like that. So finally, you have rain that's coming at some angle. You'll find out what the angle is. But the crux here is that as far as you are concerned, the rain's going to be hitting you from the front. So we just showed you a case where from the ground, it all looks like you're running like this, rain's hitting you from the back. But as far as you're concerned, the rain's hitting you from the front. So if you were to wear a bag, it's better you wear the bag behind. So the exact angle, what is it over here? Minus 3, minus 4, right? Yes, the angle is going to be tan inverse 3 by 4. It's a famous angle. I know you can calculate that. So the crux over here is that we cannot answer which direction the rain will hit you without also knowing your velocity, right? So how does your velocity play here? The idea is that there are more than one ways to get wet. One way is for the rain to hit you. In our case, the rain at 3 as its horizontal component. So if you had had any velocity less than 3, the rain hits you and you get wet. But what's the other way? The other way to get wet is you go hit the rain. And how can you do that? If your horizontal component is more than that of the rain, which is what we saw, you had a horizontal component of 6. So in one sense, you were hitting the rain. So both these are ways in which you can get wet. But the interesting question is, what would happen if you were exactly running with a velocity that's equal to the horizontal component of the rain? So the rain was coming at 3 and you were also running at 3. Neither would the rain be hitting you from the back, nor would you be hitting the rain from the front. And that's a very interesting case, isn't it? Now we began this journey with one question, right? Should you walk or run in the rain? And at that time, it seemed like a trivial question. You run as fast as possible, spend as little time as possible and you'll get less wet. But now we've shown you that running as fast as possible might let you hit more raindrops on the way. So the question is not as trivial as it seemed, right? But now you're infinitely more equipped to answer that very question with the final idea that we told that there are more than one ways to get wet. So take some time out to think what might be the best velocity to run at when the rain is coming at various angles.